there! My name is Romy and I am part of the semi-distributed team of Pictochart. How I landed this job, you ask? Well, with an infographic resume. I actually did it with Pictochart and it was quite easy to create. So today I'm going to show you how to create your own. But why create a visual resume? Well, you only have 6 seconds to attract the attention of a recruiter. And the brain processes images 60,000 times faster than text. So why not do it? And second, according to this study by Workable, out of 240 applications, only 15 candidates will make it to the interview. That's only 6%. So you know what that means, right? You're gonna have to go that extra mile if you want to stand out out of that huge pile of applications. Adding a little design magic is frankly your best bet. And that's why we're here. So follow me, let's get into Pick the Channel and see how it's done. Let's start by adding a different background color. To do so, we'll head over to the background section here in our left hand tool pane and then type in the hex code for our bright green. Let's also add a pattern overlay to a background. As you can see, you can choose from a wide variety of different background images and patterns, but let's go ahead and pick this quirky shape pattern. Once we tone down the opacity a bit with this useful toggle, we're good to go. Since we have quite a bit of content to add to our resume, our final design will end up looking way too busy if we were to place it all on top of this funky background. So what we'll do instead, it's overlay part of our current background with a simple white rectangle to give our information some room to breathe. The way we do this, is simply by clicking the graphics panel over here in our left toolbar and then hitting icons and shapes. From this library, we can choose from a whole range of different shapes. For today though, let's select the square. Change the color from the default black to white up here in the colors dropdown and then scale it up until we get the dimension we're after. Yes, that looks about right. Now, let's add another white block. For that, we'll add a new square and again resize it and change its default color to white. In the preview of the final visual, you may have noticed that we had this cool drop shadow effect. To achieve this, we get a little inventive. We'll once again head over to a graphics panel, hit shapes and icons, and select this slanted rectangle. Let's place it in the canvas. We turn it upside down first and then flip it. Then we scale it up, duplicate it, and after grouping both re rectangles, we change its color to a dark blue. Finally, we place it behind the white bar by going to Arrange and then hitting Send to Back. Let's add in our header text now by selecting the text panel over here on the left and then clicking on Title. Write your name first, change the photo, we go to Overpass, and then select the approximate text size and style. Make it bold. Then, add a subtitle, put down your role and specialty, change its size and place it on top of your name. Like you did with the name, Change the font to Overpass and make it bold for consistency purposes. To add more information, grab the last text, copy and paste it, and replace it with your website address, for example. Now, to finish your header, adjust the space between the letters of each text by clicking on the letter spacing button on the top menu, and then moving the toggle to your liking. You can also change the colors to the ones you prefer. Okay, so far so good. Now it's time to add in what your resume is all about. Your professional experience, your education, skills, milestones and more. Whatever it is you think it's relevant to the role you're applying for. For this example, we're going for a three column layout. Here on the left, we'll add an About Me blur. We'll start selecting a square frame from the graphics menu on the left, under Shapes and Icons. Once dropped in the canvas, we adjust its size. Then, 
from the same menu, we find a triangle. After rotating it and scaling it down, we place it right in the middle of the square and change the color of both shapes following the color scheme that we went after with the header. Then, we search for an icon of a pencil. We drop it in the square, rotate it, change its size and its color to blend it. Doesn't it look cool? To add the information, we bring a subtitle and after editing it, we style it by aligning it to the right, adjusting the letter spacing, making it bold, changing the font to overpass again, and finally making it look green. Oh, and we also adjust the size. Sounds like a lot, but it's easy to get done and it looks so different. Then, we head over to the left menu again and find the option of adding body text. We select it, customize its color, font, size, and select the option of line height on the top menu to give it even more space to breathe. Copy and paste your information here, and finally, align to the right. For the center column, how about we add our experience? Let me just speed this up while I do that, since you've, you've seen me doing this before. We'll use as a base the content we created in the first column to copy and paste, and then we will edit it to bring new information to our canvas. Let's head to the third column now. We copy the title from the previous column and then we add a subtitle. We adjust the text so it's consistent with our previ previous settings and then start pointing out our relevant skills for this job. A creative and fairly simple way to display, display your skills is by using a circle scale. To do so, We'll head over to the graphics panel on the left and then select icons and shapes and drag in a circle. Let's scale it down and then duplicate it until we have five circles. Now we can simply align these and apply different colors to the circles to represent our skill level. To make this section even more visually appealing, let's also add some relevant icons. We'll head back over to our Shapes and Icons panel, and in this case, we'll do a search for code. But really, it could be anything. The library counts thousands of different icons. This one looks good to me, so let's drag it into the canvas, change the color to our blue, and align it to the left of our circle chart. Let me just speed this up while I continue, continue in similar fashion. For education, let's just copy and paste what we did for experience. Then bring in the information of your academic background. Remember to bring information truthful and relevant for this application. You'll see now things run smoother once we have part of the job done. We only need to copy, paste and edit. Let's jump back to the third column. I hope you're not getting dizzy. As you can see, I'm just copying and pasting from previous content. Then, we only need to edit to bring in the new information and the right icons. Remember to scale them and to keep it consistent with the rest of the resume. The 
there's something we can all agree on. It's always a nice touch to show a bit of personality beyond your hardcore professional skills. A recruiter wants to know more about you, and that includes your hobbies and passions. What you choose to do in your free time says a lot about you. Let's keep it simple though. We'll add a circle from the graphics menu and then scale it down and change its color to our usual blue. Then let's dig in in our vast library of icons to choose what you relate to the most. Is it books? Sports? Meditating? Are you a foodie? Say it with icons. Keep in mind that icons can have different styles. Choose the same style for consistency purposes. Okay, so it's shaping up quite nicely. Finally, let's add a bar chart to represent our language skills. For that, we'll go over to our Tools panel on the left and select Charts. Here you have 14 different charts to choose from, from the most tender bar and pie charts creative icon matrices. But for this purpose, we'll just go with an horizontal bar chart and type in the values we think accurately represent our language scales. Now, by default, this chart displays a legend and an axis. But if, say, we wanted to get rid of that, we can do so by clicking the little cog icon here on the right and then deactivating the legend and axis sliders, just like this. And while we're at it, let's also change the colors of the bars to a grayscale color scheme before adding it to a resume. We're so close to finishing, but we're missing one of the most important sections. Did you guess it? Yes, your contact information. We'll copy and paste the About section on top and replace the information with your address, phone number, and email. Make sure there are no typos. You can also add the icons of your social media channels and link them to your handles in case you don't print the resume but embed it online. Now wasn't that simple? I know but we have a little more to say on the subject. So why don't you take a look at either this article, 15 expert tips to creating a winning resume, or our brand new CV microsite, with a gallery of inspiration to create your resume and free templates that will get you closer to landing that dream job you want. I'm Romy, and you can contact us in Twitter, at VictorCharty, if you have any questions or suggestions. And that's it for today, so happy VictorCharty.